Yeah, we're gonna go up the mountain, up to our Lassen Park yard, go do a little, drop off some supers, stack whatever we need to stack, do some queen checking and feeding, just cranking up feed. And that way we don't have to go up the mountain uh, often. Just do our work, let the girls be it, up there for a while and come down and back to the valley heat to 110. We have to get fuel over here in, in town. The fuel up there in the mountains, a little pricey. I think it's like maybe 20 cents more a gallon, but still pricey, 425. Oh, they said it's supposed to peak here in a couple weeks. We get a couple uh, jugs of water here, some bag of ice. We have Steve right over there. Morning. Morning. And we're gonna head up the mountain. Sun's coming up, it's about a 5.30. And uh, good, good early start. I'm hungry. So we're gonna have some McDonald's. Steve ate his breakfast, he ate bananas, he said. He, the, Steve said he's gonna buy breakfast, so we're gonna get a steak here. I think, I wonder <laughs> if they have any steaks. One of everything. Um, uh, let me do two sausage McMuffins with eggs. So Steve woke up early. I did. What time did we wake up, Steve? Uh, two forty-five. Woo! Two forty-five. You hear I'm that? Ready. I'm ready. Two forty-five. That's... I'm ready. We're ready to have some fun today. Now that's dedication, guys. All right. If that's not dedication, I don't know what you were doing at two forty-five in the morning. I'll tell you what, I'm so excited to come and help Jose today because this man's incredible. We're going to learn some awesome things today, and I'm excited to be here. Yeah. Steve lives up in Redding area, and it cooks up there. How hot did it get up there in the hottest? Uh, the hottest was like 113 the other day. Woo! You hear that? 113. What is the hottest that, that's been in your area? Drop a comment down below love to hear from you guys i mean i don't want to hear that you guys were cooking but let's see if you guys can top 113 huh 547 yeah. early birds get the worm or some mcdonald's yes <laughs> this is the starbucks of veterans right here uh we like this coffee just like we used to make it in the field oh yeah nice and black and dark nice and huh? black dark yep get just that look at it look at this right here look, look at that. that oh yeah that's just love right Woo. there love and if anybody knows that mcdonald's coffee is it hot or is it hot it's hot oh, oh yeah. yeah but it's good it's good flavor <laughs> oh yeah we're ready to go now best part of waking up that's right is mccafe in your hand <laughs> 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 Hour and 45 minute drive. Love it. Don't nap. We're going to talk all the way oh, over there. Yeah, we have a lot to catch up on. <laughs> so we haven't seen Steve in uh, a few weeks. We've been swamped. He's been swamped. So we finally got back reunited and it feels so good. So for those that don't know how Steve and I connected, he is a part of this program called Hives for Heroes and we did shoot a little bit he was talking about it we didn't release that video we just been kelly's been swamped and uh but with him and i teaming up we hope we can reach out to more people out there that don't know about this program reach out to other veterans from all sides of the military if you feel like you're at home and you want something to do or you're dealing with some things and hives for hero check them out man and uh, we'll put some more down in the description box down below and maybe later on in lunch Steve can talk to you guys a little bit about that Hives for Hero program and, and uh, we'll go from there.
Awesome. Now, off to the mountain. Let's go. Show him, Steve, the, the oldest standing barn in California. You know what this reminds me of? What's that? When I was in Antarctica on the Ross ice shelf, they actually had a ship that got stuck. So they disassembled the ship and they built the Ross hut from the ship. It wasn't as tall, but it's the door and everything. It's, it was amazing. I just can't get over, I mean, we're in the middle of nowhere and there was actually settlers here. Isn't that incredible? So I just noticed there's some boxes that look like they're moved. So we're going to go and check it out. Man, hopefully not something we need a heavier duty uh, charger or an extra ground. Whatever we need to do. Looks like something got in though, for sure. Son of a gun. So the bear got in. You could just tell there's a hive on the right knocked over a couple of them in the middle wow he got in there well, where did he breach yeah he got in there son of a gun he recently got in here you could tell he got one hive for sure tore it up and broke away down that way. Oh, great. So he knocked his stuff down here. Yeah, it just snapped. So he got one hive. Disturbed those, and that definitely happened today. We're going to drop some of this equipment off. We're going to go into town. We're going to chop that chicken wire in half. And we're gonna lay it out, we're gonna stake it down. We can go to the local hardware and stake down some of this chicken wire, attach it to our ground, that way he gets an extra zap if he comes back. And we're gonna repair our fencing mm. right over there he breached. And this is where he probably exited out and took whatever he wanted. There's the claws. Look at that, Steve. Look at that nice tasty brood he ate. Wow, he really did. Look at that. Yeah. That's what the bees or the bears like to eat, is that brood. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he took this out too over here. Right over there. Oh, I yeah, think yeah. that's where he broke yeah. in. It snaps over there. Yep. And then he maybe just made a run for it this way. Who knows? Yeah. We need a game cam. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We need a game cam. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, shoot. I thought that was him right there. Oh God. <laughs> All right, turn this thing off. They say once a bear comes in, he's coming back. We're gonna just go ahead and upgrade our charger. I have to do a little some more research. We might get the Parmex Magnum, I believe it is. We're gonna go ahead and just add another ground. I was using this rebar as a backup ground. We're just gonna go get another six foot ground and drive it in. If you just do the math, if he destroys two more hives for the charger for everything it just pays for itself so we're just going to go ahead and up the charger and get a better one even though you know this is a five mile but the whole five mile thing is just uh what we what kelly's done some research on electric fences it just it doesn't really mean anything this is a six volt so we're going to go with the magnum which is a 12 volt uh, solar power 
and we're just gonna crank up the juice and put our chicken wire fence and we had a we had a game plan to do some bee work so the only thing we're gonna do here is just we're gonna off load our supers and just go ahead and feed some of these bees really quick and uh, go into town and get some hog wire <laughs> Well, they got some bees in them, huh? When you feel you have everything just done, just right, your grounding rod, moisture is, is I mean, the ground, it's there. We had juice going on it really good. That's a six foot rod that I drove down there. This one's only a six volt, but I was, someone recommended to get this different one that was a 12 volt. So you're gonna get the 12? Yeah, we're gonna just up it. Hopefully they have it there at the feed store. So yeah, they're starting to build out pretty good. These were hives that were split not too long ago. And then we just kind of just added the box up on top just so we don't have to run up often. So it looks like they're working up. And some of those, the top box. And yeah, I mean, we are an hour and 45 minutes away, uh, about two hours actually. And uh, I like to just stack my stuff to make sure if I can't make it, that we are good to go and can keep moving forward. While I do uh, popping of lids, we got Steve doing the feeding. Ahead of him, I'm just kind of inspecting the hive real quick to make sure it's clean right. The only thing I look for, I don't look for the queen whatsoever. Um, because we're trying to be efficient today, I am only looking for eggs. So I'll just go straight into attack mode. See brood already. And I'll just put this frame in an angle. Below, clear some some uh, bees out of the way. And boom, we see eggs. So then we could just close it up. And uh, here too, I also like to manipulate my frames, get them arranged exactly how I want them, in order for the bees to be able to draw good, uniform. Uh, comb uh, There's a the queen right there here guys They're bringing in some pollen as well Where is that one at? See that? And some pollen pants If the I like the arrangement and I put it back exactly like it was. Usually I already had rearranged the frames how I wanted them. 
bring that feeder closer inside and uh, keep it like so. And we'll move on to this one, make sure this one's clean right as well. I always like to keep that lid up in the corners. Uh, never block my entrance. Just a little tip um, for those that are new to this beekeeping lifestyle, huh? We'll give myself room and just go and attack. And that's all laid out right there. We did bring some extra queens. We brought over some extra queens in case we come across anything that's queenless that needs to have a queen. Uh, we are up here every two weeks and uh, need to make our trips good trips. Can't be forgetting anything. I'm just kind of further inspecting the pattern on this one here. Some of these got cells. Some of them got mated queens. It's hard for me to tell what it was because the cells happened a while back and the mated queens happened, I don't know, maybe a, a month ago. I like this, so push everything back. Like so. Bada beam, bada boom. Hey, my name is Steve. I'm out here with the uh, Hives to Heroes program. I'm with my mentor. Incredible program. I encourage you veterans that are not doing anything. Uh, no experience necessary. We have great mentors out here, and I encourage you guys to take up a little hobby that'll make you relax. Just the sound of bees and being around them and how important it is for them to be in our ecosystem. Uh, actually, it's really important. Right now, I'm filling up feeders for Jose. Um, so this is syrup that we got here going on, and this will go in the feeders. Today, we're in Chester. Elevation is 4,500 feet, 4,500 and change. Uh, just being out here and look at this country. Can you imagine this? This is this is just beautiful up here. And I can't imagine back in the day the settlers came here and settled. I mean, this is like old school stuff right here. These old barns and buildings. I just wanted to say these folks have been amazing to veterans like myself. And uh, they encourage us. They're there with us the whole way. They, Jose has never given up on me. Um, every time I come to see him, it's been a real blessing to just talk to him. And I've learned so much about different types of uh, brush and flowers and uh, the different honeys they make. For, uh, taking time out uh, to mentor us and help us uh, overcome some of the issues we have in life. Um, this is, again, really relaxing and an amazing time to uh, look at uh, God's country and uh, just the environment. I mean, how important is this? These bees are, are healthy right now. If they were in the valley, they wouldn't be that healthy. And the valley meaning the uh, base in there uh, above Sacramento, uh, Hives to Heroes. I really thank you for opening this program to us veterans. And it's helped me a lot to uh, deal with a lot of stressors in my life, um, especially dealing with PTSD. And um, it's just a really relaxing time just to be with the bees, hear them humming, uh, hear them uh, just enjoying you know, making uh, brood and uh, man, it's it's really incredible. So I really like to shout out to Hives to Heroes group. Also, if you know of any veterans that need to get out, let them know about this program. You can't beat it. And also the companies that are supporting uh, this program, I just appreciate y'all. Thank you. All right, so we came across a queenless one. Brought some queens with us uh, in case we had something like that happen. Brought uh, 10 queens. Maybe a little overkill. And there's our queen. We forgot our candy tubes. So what we're going to do is we did bring some pollen. So I'm just going to stick some pollen in there and I'll work it 
in order to get this pollen nice and uh, soft. We'll stick it right in here, just like so. And I have some parchment paper that I will stick the parchment paper right on this. And the reason for this parchment paper, it's so that the queen does not get chewed out too fast. And that parchment paper will be just like so, because if it's just pollen, and based on my experience uh, trying to do this in the past, is when you use just pollen, <laughs> this nutri beef, they love it so much, they'll eat it out in a day. So, parchment paper, and I'll let them just chew it up. And it'll just go downward. The reason it goes downward is because if it goes this way, that pollen can get soft, drop, and pretty much trap or kill that queen if it drops right on top of her and she can't mm -hmm. move. So downward, pollen down, and uh, make sure that that paper is on both sides. And that parchment paper, they'll chew it out. And uh, should be about three days. So that's it, let's go put her in. This is the queenless one that we came across. We'll put her in downward like so. Oh, parchment paper fell. Parchment paper fell. <laughs> Steve was saying, is this all I brought for parchment paper? I told him I have the rest of the roll in the cab. But there are times where I don't, this, this is all I bring for toilet paper. Use this big piece. Now I could just put her downward just like so. And you can poke a little hole just to give them uh, the ability to start chewing up. But they really do chew this stuff up pretty fast. So downward, put these frames together. That way that parchment paper is, and like I said, downward, just like those, just like that. And that'll work great. This is only has three frames of bees. Um, and it was queenless, had some leftover brood, but for whatever reason, it could have been when I moved them up, could have smashed the queen uh, between frames. I, she could have been on the truck on top of the pallet, so much movement, so um, could have been anything. For whatever reason, she's queenless and we're fixing the problem. So I'm gonna show Steve really quick. We get finally get a break with all the queen production stuff that he's been joining us. We've been doing queen nukes and that's all we've been really doing with him, which is, um, I mean, for him, he says it's exciting, but for me, it's like to try to teach him some hive management stuff. Now we get opportunities to do stuff like this where we get to dig into hives. I wanted to show him. Uh, he's gonna be getting the hive here when he's ready for one. Uh, he's getting his property ready and situated with his stuff over there, water, source of water, and he's gonna be doing some wildflowers that he's gonna want to plant but we're gonna send them with a single right and I wanted to show him so this is a single Steve uh -huh. and you can tell it's kind of plugged up all the way across and then I'll when I want to see if it's really jam-packed uh -huh. and ready for that second box I'll t tilt it okay carefully and it's wall-to-wall -wall bees oh wow so that means they're they're pretty populated uh-huh and uh and they still have oh they still have a little bit of room and then you could always add another frame give them more room you could put a frame foundation or something that we brought yep and maybe we'll put one of those pierco ones what do you think yeah i think it'd be great and we'll try that double coated pierco frame That'd and we'll awesome. put it here on the third slot usually the third slot works great because we could fill up the feeder and then they'll start drawing that one out uh, usually when I'm putting like the uh, foundation, right. the blank ones, I like to the feeder and it'll be a, like a honey frame, then the blank frame okay. will go right there right. and they they just fill it up really nice. Yeah, so nice. I'll like open this one up and uh, like that first one as you could tell, yeah, look at that. it's jam packed with honey and this bees all the way around. Nice. Um, 
you can tell some of these are old bees, mm -hmm. so there's gonna be a lot of die off. Like how would you tell they're older bees? Right here, you see this one? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay. You could just tell, right? He's the got bald, a beard. bald thorax. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so you can tell these bald ones oh, here. Yeah. They're gonna be dying here in a couple weeks. Okay. Um, and the young ones, they're light in color. Usually, they have a little, a bunch of fuzz on them. Mm. But it's hard to tell. These are all foragers. You can tell because they're eating, and they're the ones that are flying back and forth. Right. So, we'll go further in and kind of see what's going on. And I'm starting to lay here. Looks like I've manipulated these frames. And sometimes when I say manipulating, I move frames around so they can. Right draw new wax. You could tell this is lighter. Right. And then, uh, that one. But this one can be ready for another box soon. Wow, um, look at that. There's a queen. Oh, wait. Where's the queen? Oh, no. You had to ask me. Right there. Look at that. He found her. Right there. Yep. Let's get that camera. We want to make sure. So he's, <laughs> Steve found that queen. Let's see. Right there. Look at that. There she is. So for glory. So you know if uh, if if you're new to bees, Steve didn't know nothing about bees. I'm learning every day. Every day more he's and more. Just something. And if it's either from books or YouTube or or just coming college out with course, us, yep. college course. He's he did you did one with who who uh, was it? We're working on the University of Michigan right now. Yeah. So what we're module? What, what, we're in module four. Module four. Yeah. And it's it an build, online it course. Up. Yeah, online course. Yeah. Yeah. So. Free course. Uh, so yeah, he's been doing that. He's been telling. He told me a little bit about that last time, and he says, for him, hands-on is by far like yes. what he enjoys, right. and he soaks up, and that might be something that you need. So go to your local B club, or if you're a veteran, check out the Hives for Hero. Sign up. Yes. Um, that could be helpful if you're a hands-on person. You could get sponsored by a beekeeper. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of veteran beekeepers um, there out there as well. So maybe you can connect with some of those guys. And but uh, yeah, mm, so nice. we're gonna stack this one. Steve will put the feed in there, and uh, I'll bring over a box and we'll plop it right on top. You have a queen going on in here, right? Yeah, the queen is in there. The uh, parchment's off. The, is she released then? Oh yeah, shoot, you, you spotted her. That, oh, that one, yeah, that, that's just the... Uh, pull it out? So, uh, yeah, we can pull it out. So when I know it's a fresh queen for the year, guys, I'll take my cage because I don't want it in there and I'll just throw it in there. And that just tells me that I requeened recently. Um, and once we're good to go and it's stacked, um, then there's no issues of me knowing if it's a new queen, old queen. Um, I don't paint everything. I would like to. I just realistically, I don't have that time. Um, and uh, we're gonna grab a box. Yeah, a Pierco frame. And we're gonna try to plop one of these Pierco frames right in there. See, see what it does. Look at that. Oh, incredible. Look at this. Does it feel grippy? Oh yeah. Nice. This is double double waxed. Nice. Double waxed. Let's see if we can go plop that in really quick. Give him some space here. We're getting them out of the way with the smoke so we don't smush them. As you can see, they're moving downward. Right. Here we go. There's a Pierco frame going in right now. Beautiful. Look at that. Another box on so, top. Then we'll grab a box. Here we could write a date on it. Today's date is the 13th. 713. I think so. Yeah. 
7, 13, 21. 21. And we've got that box right there. And we'll stack one? it on top. Yeah. Look at that, guys. He already knows. Yeah. Look at that. There we go. Come on, girls. Go down. Come <laughs> on, girls. There you go, girls. Oh, yeah. We're moving. We're moving. Ah. Smoke them if you got them. Okay. We should be good with that. There we go. Put it right on top. You want to put a date on this guy? Yeah, we'll actually, we'll remove, maybe we'll move uh, four frames, two here, yeah. two here, and then we'll put Pierco frames in there. Okay. Boy, those are nice frames. Yeah. And the reason why we we removed, guys, um, the outer ones is because if she starts rolling and starts laying out pretty good, um, we do want her to draw on this stuff that's already drawn out. And that way she can lay and then work herself out. As she works herself out, we will move these four frames inward and these will go out. And what we'll also do, we'll put some feed in there. That way, because it's a stacked body, oh. empty, no resources on top, we want to give them a little jump start and uh, okay. get those girls nicely plugged. I'm actually going to do a little experiment here, guys. I'm going to put one of these Western Bee Supply frames. Same spot. This one's populated as well, all the way across. Maybe not as strong as the one next door, this one, but we're going to see, oh wrong spot, I need to go in the third slot. We're going to see what's the difference. This is coated one time, this is a double coated. So, pull this girl back out. And I'm not, uh, you're going to get different results with different bees, different uh, bread queens so many different scenarios so this is not in any way a review of what's better because you can't you can't review something like this with just two hives you need thousands you need to do a thousand here and a thousand there in order to get a good accurate uh, review and results of performance of what's well which one's better um, we do like the Western Bee Supply frames. We've got a few thousand of these, but we also do run Pierco frames that we do love also. I love the Black Foundation frames from Pierco. Um, we have a lot of them in our program. Here and there, you'll see a bunch of them. Um, and it's, uh, I bought some years ago, years ago, 500 frames. And I just put them here and there and, uh, couple hives I also bought some from Man Lake a few years back had them printed and those I really enjoyed that I printed them I'm happy that I printed them because it's just a uh, uh, you have a date you have uh, security since security as far as if that stuff gets stolen you know uh, that that's your stuff it could e easily be scraped off but you know, it, it works for us, and we like knowing that we printed them. So uh, we're gonna mark a date on here. Third slot away from the feeder. Third slot away from the feeder. And we'll close them up. So hopefully, in a in a month, these girls, these singles here, will be ready to stack. All right, get back to work, Jose. I want to show you guys that slot that the bear got that single we are going to do a quick split that way we can fill up that slot and make up for that loss already I'll tilt, tilt it up nicely plugged down below this is how i like to do um 
little quick method of um, doing a like a walk away split okay just give them a nice couple little puffs all right that's just uh just to get them rolling so you don't have to blow that hot air um, onto these girls then you can start cranking it up a little giving them some more puffs and the goal here is to puff the smoke so the queen can run up. She is going to be one of the first uh, bees to just run up away from that smoke going into that top chamber. We'll give it a couple more puffs. You can get a little more intense now. Just like so. So then you'll take that top box, you'll relocate it to your new slot and the goal here is to get the nurse bees to go up into the nurse new location you'll catch all the drift going back here or chances are she's up above bottom box will catch all the drift coming back even the ones that go up here will be foragers and they'll still fly back over here give it a couple more puffs and uh then you'll Crack it and walk it right over to your new slot. You can tell there's some bees that kind of left that zone. So good, good amount of brood down below. So even though it does not have the queen, you'll have a good amount of hatch out coming soon. Look at that pattern. Isn't that beautiful? Nice. Nice ring. Laid out here. Some new hatch out. Happening right there. So there's going to be hatch out. Look at that ring. Beautiful. Nice. So definitely have some, some hatch out that's going to happen here so that's good and I like to put the frames back like I found them so crank the feed and uh, we'll just go ahead and put a queen in there just wrap it around like so I'll leave that up no problem put it right right in that brood chamber I always like to face the queen downward in case I put a cum, put a can on top. She's either to the side. Uh, we're not going to put any cans on top. So in the middle will be fine. But still facing her downward. I will be out here and uh, for whatever reason if she's still in here and I come in a week or a couple days to drop cans. That's never an issue of drowning her. So face downward a little in an angle like so. Look at these gloves. You're already sweating. Hey, that's water. <laughs> oh, no, no. That's for Kelly. Yes, this Look is this. hard work, Miss Kelly. See? The ProVent. Guys, these things are awesome. Yes, I'm breathing really nice. He has right his now. shorts on. Snorts. <laughs> <laughs> so this is my lunch right here. The Santa Fe salad. Gonna go check out what Steve's eating. I think he's, I think he's over there. I think he's in the truck because he's hiding. He must be having a Snickers or something over there. Let's go take a look. Oh yeah, look at that sub. Pretzel sandwich. Pretzel sandwich. Not bad. Pretzel. pretzel. You need a bee yard here. So we are here in Susanville Tractor Supply and uh, we were looking at what else do I need? Do I need to get into the charger and all this? Uh, the hog fence, I was going to do the hog fence. This guy stopped. He's a rancher out here and he just says, I know a lot about fencing. Get rid of that hog fence. Uh, yeah, great idea, you know, it's, but you need to have some juice. and. The setup he told me what do you have 
told him I have this setup. He said, it's all you need. That's all you need. Add three more grounds or two more grounds, have a total of three grounds. So I have a electric reader, reads uh, the volts here. So we have one that was uh, reading only like 4,000. And he said, something's dragging your fence. So add two more grounds, get rid of that hog fence that's uh, taking up a lot of um, the juice. Go ahead and that first line at the bottom, make it a ground, add that ground to your box, something like this, the ground, and one, two, three, he recommended eight feet apart, bottom wire attached to my chicken wire, he said you should be able to get it, make it at least chest high, don't put too much uh, space in between them, maybe five or six inches, so that's what we're going to try, so we're going to get some, he recommended aluminum, so we're going to get this aluminum fancy in here. Is that six? That's six, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. And we'll go get our grounding rod from uh, good old Ace. We took off the insulators. We are now gonna go that route that we were talking about earlier. Just do the wires all the way down, running uh we might just do five, five hot. That bottom one's gonna be a ground. Go into our charger. This chicken wire will be grounded out to our grounds. We add two more grounds, total of three grounds. Two of them are copper. This might be the only section that we don't have enough chicken wire for this front side. Got to be at smarter than the average bear, I guess. There you go. All right, so we did six wires this time. Cross our finger, guys. Upper. Gonna hook up our grounds. We have a galvan galvanized right over there. We have a copper, uh, another co copper one right over here. These ones are eight foot rods. All right, guys, we got three grounds six wires six tiers that bottom wire is a ground kind of took the recommendation of the guy that we met at tractor supply and runs pigs and cattle and has a farm so he said uh, he's very knowledgeable and i'm with it well, it's pretty much similar to uh to a lot of your guys recommendations as far as adding more grounds so that's what we're doing and me and steve are out of here we had it all right, we had a good time out here. Yeah, we did. And, good uh, day, good day today. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Give us a big thumbs up on this video. Thanks for watching, guys. See ya.